thank you very much. Uh, thanks for the opportunity to speak here. Um, maybe I will start by saying uh, two words about myself. I'm a professor of mathematics at the Hebrew University. Um, and for the past 15 years, uh, education started as a little hobby and ended up being something uh, much bigger than that. So, um, as you see, uh, I'm, I, I want to talk about pedagogy, specifically mathematics for elementary school. So, let me start by pointing out four uh, issues uh, related to math education. First, changes are, going, are very, very fast. Okay, uh, I've been talking to a lot of educators, of uh, people from ministries of education around the world. Uh, the feeling is that the demands are changing way too fast, and educational systems are unable to assimilate those at this pace. Okay, and as a result, I think it's all over the world a feeling that the scholar system is always lagging behind what's actually needed. Second point uh, is about teachers. Um, in mathematics, in many other disciplines, the foundations are laid at the elementary school. And the fact is, is that teachers do not, are not experts in what they're teaching. They learned to be general, general teachers and not teachers of mathematics or teachers of science. And what, what we see a lot in mathematics as a result of that is that teachers tend to emphasize procedures rather than actually explaining and laying foundations. And the result, the first, I think, uh, catastrophe we see happens at the, the transition from elementary to middle school. All of a sudden, kids have to go from doing uh, arithmetic to algebra, and then you see that the foundations are not there. Math anxiety, okay, a very well-known phenomenon, again, uh, cross-cultural, uh, and uh, except for uh, this uh, sad face, uh, the bottom line, is that a massive underachievement of children, children abstaining from going to, uh, to learn uh, STEM disciplines. And the fourth point I want to raise has to do with technology, okay? So everybody talks about 21st century education, technology, smartphones, uh, and so on. But the fact is that this is not something that comes from the field. It comes from above. And what you see in practice is the following scenarios. First. There is technology, but just unused. Second, used, but absolutely no quality control. And uh, finally, even when it's used, usually the technological advantages are not really uh, exploited. Okay, with that I want to say a few words about Matific. Uh, so it's a company that uh, teaches math at elementary school level by creating thousands of games, interactive activities, which are aligned with curricula and textbooks, personalized, multilingual, a lot of resources for teachers. I'm going very, very quickly because I want to show examples. So I'll actually skip all that, works on all platforms, smartphones, even offline. And what I want to talk about is pedagogy. Now, I don't have a lot of time, as I can see here. So uh, I will just show a list of what I call the pillars of good math education. Okay, teaching concepts, going gradually from the concrete to the abstract, self-motivating, a very big issue when we come to teaching in general and mathematics in particular, develop problem-solving skills, sitting ahead so that when you get to, to middle school, for example, you've already uh, learned all the foundations for that, active learning versus passive learning, exploiting the technology, engaging, motivating, that's uh, another point uh, different from the first one, uh, provide the right adaptive positive feedback to kids, and finally, a very big issue is the fact that classrooms are very heterogeneous and teachers need solutions that would accommodate from, on the one hand, the no child left behind policy to uh, challenging the, the more advanced students. All right, so now examples, okay? I was talking about teaching concepts. And the best thing uh, would, do, would be just to show an example. So let's take as an example the concept of parity. Odd and even numbers, something that children learn at first grade. So actually, what is an even number? Question to the uh, public, but we don't have time to. Uh, so let me give you answers. First, 
a number is even if it's the sum of two whole equal numbers, right? Six is even because it's three plus three. But it's also a number which is a sum of pairs. Six is even because it's two plus two plus two. And the third answer is that a whole number, uh, uh, an even number, is a number whose last digit is either 0, 2, 4, 6, or 8. Now, the first two definitions really tell you something about parity, whereas the third gives you nothing about parity except for a, a fast mean to identify whether a number is even or odd. Now, if you look at most resources, textbooks, online resources, what you will see is what you see here. Okay, you have a list of numbers and you have a pen and now you have to circle the odd numbers or the even numbers. It doesn't teach you anything about the concept of parity. All right, so let me show you an ed tech alternative. It's a game. Okay, you have those uh, flowers and uh, the child has to determine whether there's an even or odd number of flowers. And the idea, of course, is that visually you see pairs and if you understand what parity means, what evenness means, Okay, you would uh, find a solution. And then you go to another example, okay? And everything is very interactive, right? For example, here you have this one flower over there which you could actually move, okay? I pre-recorded it, by the way. Uh, and again, get pairs, all right? And it's even, and then you'll get to the next example. And if you make an error, you'll get a feedback that will actually show you uh, why uh, you made a mistake. Okay, so let's make an error here, and you get some feedback, okay, and which shows you why it's actually odd. All right, let me say a few words about motivation. So, as you know, kids think of mathematics something alien, boring, has nothing to do with their own interests. And there's a lot of attempts to endear mathematics, usually with uh, a lot of sugar coating. All right, and the way I would like kids to do math is through self-motivation. So just to finish with an example, again, the learning objective here is to add and subtract within 20 using a number line. Okay, that will be the standard way of teaching it. And here is a game where you actually have to get the ball to the basket. Okay, I think I pressed it. I have 49 seconds. And you have to place those springs so that the ball will bounce and get to the basket. Okay, and the point is, and I will finish with that, the child, from my point of view as an educator, is adding now on a number line. But from the point of view of the child, they're playing a game. If they fail, the crystal ball will break. And, uh, you know, but the point is that kids are used to play. And when they fail, they're not frustrated. They right away go back to the game and try to succeed where they previously failed. And that's the kind of energy and self-motivation I want to bring into education. And uh, since I only have seven seconds left, I will stop here. Thank you very much.